Let's talk about two folk instruments that were very popular in early America. Now the one I've got on my lap right now is supposedly the only American instrument that we can claim. However, you get a bunch of ethnomusicologists together and they'll argue that point for a long, long time. This is a mountain dulcimer as opposed to a hammer dulcimer, which is a very large instrument that's shaped like a trapezoid with lots of strings on it. This is a mountain instrument. Appalachian Mountains. And it came from a desire for people to add music to the old songs that they were singing. The dulcimer is a very easy instrument at the entry level. It's diatonic. Now that means that it doesn't have any sharps and flats, which is why the fret spacing, these little metal bars, are not regular. On a guitar or a banjo you'll find the frets everywhere. They're very regular. Um, on the dulcimer they took out a lot of notes. It's a straight scale. So it's very easy to pick out the melodies that are stuck in your head. Um, it's tuned very simply. This one's tuned in uh, what I call the dad tuning. It's a D and an A and a D, D. There's four strings. And you strum it with a pick. Now some of the early players would use a turkey quill or about anything they could come up with to strum the strings. I'm using just a basic guitar pick. The instrument sounds like this. It's a very soft and quiet instrument. Works work very well in the log homes that the people lived in in the Appalachian Mountains. It was those are small homes and you had a lot of people living in them. So you didn't want anything loud and obnoxious. You wanted something that would kind of blend into the background. And the dulcimer did that. Nowadays the dulcimer is played a lot as an instrumental instrument, which means they don't sing with it, but originally it was designed to play to accompany singing. Here's an old song from way back when. It's about the, the perils of being a goose a long time ago. Well, go tell Aunt Rhody, go tell Aunt Rhody, go tell Aunt Rhody, the old gray goose is dead. She died in the mill pond, died in the mill pond, died in the mill pond by standing on her head. So go tell Aunt Rhody, go tell Aunt Rhody, Go tell Aunt Rhody, the old gray goose is dead. The instrument was played sitting down or on a table. You played on your lap or on a table. The goslings are crying. Goslings are crying, goslings are crying because their mother's dead. So go tell Aunt Rhody, go tell Aunt Rhody, go tell Aunt Rhody, the old gray goose is dead. And that's a mountain dulcimer. And mine looks like this. They come in lots of shapes, lots of sizes. They were created by independent woodmakers, and they built them as they saw fit. Let me show you another instrument from that same time period. Set this one over here. Now this is a banjo. A banjo is nothing more than a drum. 
You can look right into the back of it. Um, that little thing in the back of it is a cat toy. Makes it sound a little bit softer. Uh, don't tell the cat where it is. But it's a, a drum, and this is a skin head. The early ones had a skin head. Nowadays they have um, more of a plastic type of head to them, um, which makes them louder and crisper and more dependable. Skin heads change with the weather, so if it gets very hot and humid out, then this will expand and the tone will disappear. Uh, banjos were hard to keep in tune uh, back then, and they're still kind of hard to keep in tune. They say the banjo players spend half their time tuning and the other half playing out of tune. Mine has five strings. And it has one really high string here that does nothing more than that. That's all it's going to do. This instrument came from Africa. When the Africans were brought over onto the North American continent, in their heads, they brought an instrument from Africa and then they built it over here. And it was four strings back then. It had these three. And it still had the high drone string. Here in America, we added the fifth string, which is the low note, the bass string. And the banjo um, can be played several different ways. It can be strummed. Was probably the most common way. That's just a guess. The other way is um, kind of a, a variation of that. It's called frailing or claw hammer or old time banjo playing and it's a um, more rhythmical. Nowadays, you're more familiar with the bluegrass style, which is, which is a picking style, very, very fast, and meant to be more of a lead guitar in a band sort of style. Banjo is a lot of fun. around the back of it so it's not open and that's to increase the volume it's to make it louder and that's what's commonly called a bluegrass banjo this one is an open back banjo um, because it obviously has an open back for an old time banjo so that's that's what this particular one is and this particular one just for the sake of getting information out there was built in Chicago by the William Stahl people and it was built in 1890, so that makes this instrument about 130 years old, which is pretty amazing. The banjo and the dulcimer are two big instruments in the folk music world. Um, a lot of people use them. You hear them every now and again, keep your eye open for them. Once again, banjo and the mountain dulcimer. Thank you so much.